Welcome back to Excel Exposure. Today's lesson will be an introduction to macros and visual basic programming in Excel. Before we begin, you want to make sure you have um, all of the correct options enabled in Excel. If you go to um, your ribbon up top, you should be able to see this developer tab here. If you can't, you'll want to go to um, File, Options, and there is a Customize Ribbon tab here click on that you'll see a list of tabs on the right and you want to make sure this developer tab is checked if there is no developer tab over here you can you can click this drop down list go to all tabs and then you'll find the developer one here you can click add so you want to make sure you have that you also want to make sure uh, if you download this this file it'll already be saved this way but um, whenever you're working in an Excel workbook and you want it to have macros make sure you save it as a macro enabled workbook which is a .xlsm file. And then also lastly there's some security features and you might have to enable um, macros in Excel itself. So if you go to the Trust Center which is again in the Options menu and you click Trust Center Settings there's a Macro Settings tab and I have mine as enabling all macros but um, you can do it as Disable with notification and that will give you the option to um, accept it. But if those are all in place you should be able to use macros and, uh, and I'll show you how in just a second. One of the easiest ways to make a macro is to do a recorded macro and actually it'll help you get an understanding of how macros work and also what kind of uh, information you can get from just recording a macro if you don't know um, the syntax or the, or, the, or the coding language itself, it'll give you some insight as to how to write a macro. So first, um, if you go to the developer tab, you'll see there's a record macro option up top. And then also, depending on what options you have enabled, there could be a little record macro shortcut down bottom. And if you don't have that there, you can right click here, and it'll give you options for the status bar, but there's a macro recording option here you can enable. So first, I'm going to show you how to record a macro. Um, it's going to be a pretty easy one, which is just copying text from where it says, please copy me, and pasting it into cell C6. So if I highlight that, um, I go to record macro, I'll click it down bottom. Once I click it, it'll ask me for the macro name. I'll do macro, uh, I'll call it record macro. You can also give it a shortcut key, which I use a lot, but I won't show you in this uh, example. And then you hit OK. And you'll see down bottom there's this little stop button which shows you that it's currently recording. Um, and all I'm going to do is uh, right click this, copy it, go to C6, right click, and click paste. And now I'm going to go down and hit stop. So it doesn't quite seem like it did anything, but if you open up Visual Basic, which you can do in the developer tab by clicking this button, or you can do Alt F11, which will bring it up, and you'll want to see, first of all, this is probably your first time seeing the uh, Visual Basic interface. Um, in the top left there's a Project Explorer, and the bottom left is a Properties menu. You want to find the, the um, they're also showing add-ins on the left too, that's what this AS ASAP Utilities and all this other stuff is. You want to find the current file you're working with, which is um, Excel Exposure Visual Basic Examples. And then there's a Modules folder. If you open that up and double click on Module 1, it'll show the macro that we just recorded. So you see it says uh, sub record macro with empty parentheses which you need whenever you're writing a sub procedure which is um, what a macro is really uh, made of and usually these parentheses are blank and then there's an end sub at the end. Within that um, there are some comments here. It, it automatically inserts some comments so anything after apostrophe in Visual Basic will be written as a comment which means it won't be picked up by the system in, in terms of running the program but it's there to give you information when you're reading the code as to what's in it so this won't actually be run as code instead it is for information and you see if you hit enter it'll turn green um, and you can use that when you're going through and writing your own macro to let people know or even yourself know in case you forget what certain parts of the code do and this is the macro we, we recorded so whatever we have is selected will be copied so selection.copy um, range c6.select which means it'll go to uh, c6 and then active sheet.pastes 
would uh, paste wherever you have it currently selected. So it's just three lines of code and that should do exactly what we we just um, showed you. So I will get out of this. I'll write in some new text here. So um, new text. Now the problem was since we restarted recording the macro and we already had this selected, we need to make sure we pick it before we run that macro again. So if I go up top where it says macros and I run the record macro one, you'll see that it copied it from that cell and pasted it here. Uh, one problem would be if you didn't have that area selected, let's say I had F5 selected and I went and ran the same macro, it would put the blank area in because it copied whatever I had selected at the beginning which doesn't quite do what we want it to do. Um, you could go into that macro and fix it yourself by adding you know, uh, range c4.select but instead what we'll do is we'll do a custom macro down here which we'll write from scratch um, to do the same thing in, these, in this area. So let me run that first one just to put that new text back there and now we'll write our own macro. So you want to go back into Visual Basic again that's either Alt F11 or you can click right here and we will add our own uh, subroutine down below. So first you want to start with writing sub and then um, custom macro with uh, nothing between the parentheses. And once I hit enter it will actually add the end sub at the end. Now anything you write in between these two it will run during the custom macro code. So if we wanted to do something like the last one we were just seeing um, let me just flip back to my Excel for a second. So we have range C11 and we want to copy it to C13. So you can base what you're writing here off of the recorded macro or you can look up in, an ex in a VBA book or online as to what uh, the, different, the different ways that code is written. But since you just recorded it up top you can see that it would be range C11 which is where we're going to start. And so you put the range name in quotes within a parentheses after range we want to do dot select so it'll select range c11 then as you see up top selection dot copy will copy whatever we have selected we want it to go into range c13 so I will select this as well as you see it selected c6 up top and then we'll do an active sheet dot paste so now we've written really quickly a macro based on what we recorded, but we wrote it from scratch ourselves just to show how that'll work. So I will X out of my Visual Basic Editor. Now you see I have custom macro written in C11. I'll click anywhere because our new macro doesn't, doesn't really care where we start. Go into Macros, and I'll run this custom macro. And you'll see that it copied and pasted it into the right place. Instead of going into macros to run it, you can also do um, a button. So if you see this insert box here in the developer tab, you can do um, top left is a button. We'll click a button here and we'll have it use the recorded macro up top. So you click which macro you want that button to work with. I'll go in and change the name here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see that. And then now if I type in anything, type type and uh, remember I need to start in C4 in order for this to work I'll click recorded and it will copy and paste it again just to show you real quickly I'll add another one to the second one here and it'll be custom macro this time if you right click it won't run it it'll just let it uh, start highlighting it so you can actually make some changes to it so if you're off of it and you want to um, get into editing it without actually clicking it. Make sure you right click it and it'll, it'll give you some options. And then this one um, I will click on the custom button and it ran the second macro. So that shows you how you can write your own macro just popping open Visual Basic and typing in uh, whatever code you know or, or whatever code is relevant to what you want to accomplish. Uh, I'll show one more example which is using a couple things that aren't actually in Excel but as part of the Visual Basic um, application. So it's involving an input box and a message box. So let me open back up Visual Basic. Um, I'm going to enter another macro and you can have as many macros as you want in here. Um, they're just going to be separate uh, instances that you can, you can um, edit separately and run whenever you need them. 
Um, so I'm going to make uh, an input message box and I'll have it uh, ask you for your name and then display an, an easy message um, just to show you how these two functions work within uh, Visual Basic. So we'll call it name entry with blank parentheses. Now one thing that you'll be able to use in Visual Basic that you won't get from a recorded macro is, uh, is a variable. So that's something where you can have it, it named something. We're going to call it name here because that's what we're, we're asking someone to enter. But you're basically storing this information in a variable and then you can use that variable later when you need uh, what's in it. So we're going to ask someone for what, what their name is and you could call this whatever you want, name variable, let's say. We'll do equals input box open parentheses and then what the prompt will be. And you'll see the syntax pops up underneath and anything that's in uh, brackets is not required to be put in but is, is optional. So I will say what is your name and then end the quotation and end the parentheses. So whatever you're going to put in that input box as your name will be stored as the name variable. Then if we wanted to display a message box with that information you could just write message box um, will have it say uh, in parentheses how are or sorry in quotes how are you doing with a space and a quote then in order to put the name in we'll add an ampersand and name variable and afterwards we'll add another ampersand and a quote um, a question mark what that'll essentially do is display a message box which will combine the text I've written how are you doing it'll add in the name variable whatever you, what was entered for name and then it'll add a, a question mark at the end to make sure it's a question after I hit enter that should be all we need to get this macro to work um, if you want to run a macro straight from Visual Basic you don't need to go back into Excel instead you can make sure that your cursor is in between um, the sub and n sub for this macro and go up to the top and hit this little play button or you can use F5. Uh, so I will hit play and you'll see it goes back to Excel for me. It asks me what my name is so I'll type Ben and I'll hit OK and it spits out how are you doing Ben and uh, I'm doing quite well thanks Excel. So um, that'll at least give you an introduction as to how to use macros, what the general setup is of the Visual Basic application and how it relates to um, Excel itself. I will post some more advanced uh, lessons on Visual Basic, but hopefully that will give you a nice little introduction. Thanks. Bye-bye.